So today we want to talk about frost seeding, but I really don't want to talk about the physical uh, aspect of frost seeding that everyone else is talking about, the how, the why, you know, how you're going to do it, where you should do it. I want to talk about the actual products involved in frost seeding in the form of seeds. I want to talk about what we firmly believe you should look for and what we firmly believe you should avoid. We want to save you both money and frustration in the long run when you choose your seed for frost seeding. Let's talk about clover. So I see this all the time when I go in the big box stores, you know, the Cabela's, the Walmarts, the tractor supplies, these companies that have their plastic jugs or their bags, you know, three, four, five pound bags of clover, 35, 40, 50% inert matter in the form of seed coating. Folks, we do not use seed coating here at Northwoods Whitetails. We finally got the last clover out of our clover blend that had seed coating on it. We had one seed that we really liked the genetics and the performance of it, but we could not find a replacement for it. We finally found that replacement. Now our all our clover products are seed coating free. You look at any bag that we have, less than 1% inert matter, okay? Now a lot of people say, well, you need that seed coating to get great results. <laughs> I've been growing the same clover for well over 12 years and I've not seen an issue, okay? If I thought the seed coating was so great and those seeds are actually cheaper than the non-coated, we'd have a wall and a shelf full of it, but we don't. And we don't for a reason, you do not need it. I don't care what anyone says. All right, now you take that bag that you just lost 35, 40 to 50% in seed coating and they put an annual Bersine Clover. Some might put Crimson in there, but I see a lot of these big buck seed companies and fancy seed companies, they put Bersine Clover into their Clover blends. I do not do that here at Northwoods, okay? We have four Clovers in our Clover blend and our Clover blend plus Chicory. All four are white perennial Clovers. There are no annuals. There's no biannual reds. It's all white Clover perennials. Now I want to tell you something that's rather interesting. So this is a price list we got from one of the big seed uh, distribution companies uh, in the United States, 16 pages long, but there's, I believe it's just under 40 different clovers they have here. Some of the ones that we use, uh, they might've changed the name in here, but it's, you know, I did some research and it's pretty close to what we're using, but they're the most expensive. Do you know what the cheapest one in here is? The cheapest Clover seed to buy out of, I'm going to say about 40 clovers, by far, Bersine Clover. That is the cheapest clover I can buy right now. And I'm going to say you can probably buy it as well. It's as cheap as it gets, okay? Do you want that in your clover blend? You're paying a premium price for that seed and you're getting a cheap clover seed. I think there's a place for Bersine. I really like Bersine as a spring planted summer forage green fall plow down. I really like that. I think it's a great, that crimson clover, some balanza clovers, those annual clovers have a place, not in your clover blend because they're gonna be gone after one year. Same thing with red. Red is a phenomenal clover for summer food, spring food. I love planting red in the fall and having it come back in the spring and then we use it the following August in a plow down. I do not put it in my clover blends. I want my clover blends to last, gosh, five, six, seven years, you know, with proper care, good weed control, it sh you should get a long time out of it and maybe just have to go out and go frost seed a couple of thin spots here and there. But if you start to add red, you start to add a lot of these Bersim annual clovers, folks, you're gonna have to be filling in those spots every year. Gosh, maybe that's what they want you to do. That's a great strategy if you think about it. We don't do that here, folks. So if you're not buying Northwoods, Whitetail's Clover, Clover Blend Chicory, our clover products, read the label. If you see Bersim clover, please understand you will not see that clover in 2025 if you plant it in 2024. If you don't believe me, Google Bersim clover. When it says it's an annual, that's what it means. You plant it in 2024, it's not coming back in 2025. Many of these red clovers are biannuals, the ones that we sell, the ones that we have access to. I found a phenomenal red clover uh, overseas, but I didn't bring it in because it's not going to fit our strategy. If it was a perennial, man, I would have brought it in, but it's not. It's a biannual, and I don't want biannual or annual clovers in my clover blends. Now, there's a lot of guys out there arguing, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. How am I wrong? 
If I want to buy four pounds of a perennial clover, why do I want two pounds of annual or perennial clover, you know, a pound and a half of seed coating and a half a pound of annual clover? That makes no sense to a customer that's spending their hard earned money. Okay, please be careful when you're buying clover to frost seed. Read the tags and understand what you're getting. Okay, and we, we get this concerning these big buck seed companies. There's a couple of mixes. I'm not going to name the names. I just, I, I don't want to do that. But we answer this question multiple times. Emails. I just had a phone conversation the other day with a gentleman. He buys this particular uh, seed company's mix and it's the same story every time. This thing just doesn't fit. Uh, it doesn't fill in. This won't fill in. After two years, it's not filling in. And I tell them, yes, because you planted it at the recommended, I think it's seven pounds or eight pounds an acre. Well, you had three to three and a half pounds of coating. And then you had another half a pound to a pound of annual clover. And then you've got a little bit of red in there that might not be coming back. So you're only getting, uh, let, let's just say it's 10 pounds. You're only getting three to three and a half pounds of perennial white clover. That's why it doesn't fill in. That's why it's full of weeds. So something to think about, okay? Just trying to educate you folks before you go and make that purchase on Clover. All right, another one is chicory. Now, chicory, I love chicory. The more and more I use the strain of chicory that we have here, I'm telling you, every one of our kill plots this year, our little honey plots, are going to be in our Seclusion 360. The deer absolutely smash it. They're eating it in the backyard right now because we don't have much snow. I'm going to take you out there, show you a couple of pictures. The chicory is still bright green. I like this, but there's a lot of companies that'll throw two, three, four percent chicory out there. That's nothing, folks. That that really isn't anything. Okay. We go with 25% chicory in our clover blend plus chicory. We got 65% chicory in our seclusion blend that has white clover in it. Okay. If you're gonna try to buy some chicory, make sure you're actually getting chicory. Man, anything under 20%, 15%. It's going to be hard to spot that in a year. And I think chicory is quickly becoming a very important uh, attraction from what I've seen personally and what our partners have seen. Uh, our chicory is becoming a very important attraction, especially in October. You want a high percentage of chicory if you've got that three, four, five, six percent, man. Try to find something else. Conditions. Okay, there's so many companies that want to sell you this clover mix from Canada to Florida, Maine, all the way out to Montana. It doesn't work that way and we understand that. If you've got, and I'm going to pick on our state of Michigan once again, I'm sorry guys, Central Michigan, Northern Michigan, known for sand. Central Wisconsin, sandy soil. I probably wouldn't be doing our clover blend there. What I'm probably going to be looking at is our red clover and maybe some chicory because what you can do is go for two years when that biennial is going to start to peter out if you get your soil fixed now you can overseed frost seed our white clover blend but if you know you've got the conditions that aren't ready for it you might not be getting the great results all summer long you might get germination in the spring when there's a lot of moisture but you know the longer we get into the drier conditions that soil not might not be able to to sustain the white clover. So look at the conditions. What are you dealing with? If you got questions, ask them in the comments below. We can probably point you in the right direction to one of our products. Now, that should cover clover. Okay, again, please be careful. Understand what you're buying. Understand what you're putting on the ground. Is that going to be there in 2026, 2027? Or am I going to have to go back to the big box store and buy the stuff all over again to overseed? the thin spots, or you can use something like we have here at Northwoods Whitetails, eight pounds an acre. We might bump that rate up to about 10 frost seeding, depending if you've got birds in, uh, you know, small rodents that might eat some of the seed before it gets a chance to get into the ground. Man, I really don't think you're going to have to worry about thin spots in annual clovers and things like that, folks. Again, please understand what you're putting in that seed or before that seed hits the ground. Switchgrass. We've done so many videos lately on switchgrass. We've got a couple more to go, but I cannot emphasize this enough. Folks, buy good seed. Switchgrass is not cheap. Is it over $20 a pound? I don't believe it. I don't think it's worth it. We sell it for just over $16 here. We've got the newest varieties in the country, RC Switchgrass. 
We've got RC Tecumseh for sandy conditions. We've got RC Big Rock. And we're getting, soon we're getting RC Chippo, which is a direct replacement for Cave and Rock. Get good seed. This is the newest variety in the country. This is not those 30, 40, 50 year old varieties that many other people are trying to sell you. Okay, get good seed. Switchgrass is expensive. We've got the best there is for whitetail habitat here at Northwoods. Uh, the other thing, and I cannot emphasize this enough, I'd almost like to put this in every switchgrass video we do. Do not spray Roundup once you're done frost seeding. There's an old adage, an old theory, that you can go out there and frost seed and then spray your way out of it before the green up, before the car farmer's corn is up, you know, blah, blah, blah. Folks, I have seen Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars of switchgrass ruined because of this terrible advice, okay? If you're planting 50-year-old variety switchgrass that grows slow, grows short, takes forever to come out of the ground, you might be able to get away with this, okay? That's possible. But if you're using this RC switchgrass that we're selling, folks, please do not spray Roundup on frost-seeded switchgrass, okay? All right, so we're going to take you out into the shop, show you some of our clover varieties. We're going to take a step out onto the food plot. We're going to show you some pictures of our clover blend, clover blend plus chicory that's still green here, February 2nd. So thanks for watching. Let's head on out to the shop. So I wanted to come out to the shop quick and show you folks what I mean by our clean seed, no coating, no inert matter. We've got six different clover blend products on the shelf, clover related products. None of them have more than 1% inert matter. None of them do, okay? Everything's around 0.5 to 0.7. I think the highest one is 0.86%, less than 1% inert matter. But I'm gonna grab a bag of our clover blend, okay? Four white perennial clovers in here, that's all. There's no annual clovers. There's no biannual red clover. There's 0.52% inert matter. That's it, nice clean seed. No fancy packaging. This is how you get it delivered to your house. So let's say you go to the big box store and you grab, you know, a bag or plastic jug of the Big Buck Seed Company Clover Blend. Well, you take a look at it, 35, 40% seed coating inert matter, 10, 15, 20% annual brassine clover. Before you walk out the door, you have to realize you only have two pounds of seed, not four. You got two pounds of stuff that's not gonna grow. You might have a quarter of a pound to a half a pound of an annual clover that in 2025 you will not see if you plant it now. And then you might have some perennial whites in there. If you've got some biannual reds in there, 2026 will be the last year you see that. Just kind of keep that in mind when you're making your clover purchases for frost seeding, folks. They're not all the same. There's a lot of stuff out there that you're going to have to buy double to get. If you want four pounds of actual seed for a half acre, you're going to have to buy eight pounds of that stuff with all the fluff in the bag. So. so I hope this all helped today, folks. What we want to do is just educate people help you make that decision on what you should be putting in your food plots. Okay, again, it's, it's time to start frost seeding. I think next week we'll do some of the process videos on how we think you should frost seed, but hopefully this helps you make a good decision on whether you're buying clover, or whether you're buying switchgrass, you know, those are the two popular ones right now for frost seeding. And this helps you wade through some of the nonsense that's out there as far as social media information and just, products that I just don't think are the best use of your hard-earned money. So hopefully we can help you here at Northwoods. We've got a lot of great products at northwoodswhitetails.com. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you in a few days.